The year was 300,000 BC, the dawn of the Homo sapien. Not to be confused, of course, with me, Simi and Jimmy, because unlike you at home, I'm not a human. I'm the next step in human evolution, which makes me the perfect candidate to review the entirety of human history from an objective viewpoint. So as far as scientific classification is concerned, I'm a heterosapien and you're all a bunch of homos. Welcome to the history of humanity. So how did you humans evolve past the rest of the animal kingdom into what you are today? The answer is brain power. Two million years ago, your brains were the size of a single fist, and today it's the size of two. While one fist might be enough to satisfy your mother, it isn't enough for a civilized species. So what happened that caused your brains to double in size? The answer is simple, fire. Or more specifically, what fire allowed you to eat meat. Back in the One Fist days, the earliest form of humans dicked around in the East African grasslands eating grass and land. But one day, when your greatest ancestor got bored of eating sticks and tried rubbing them together instead, he accidentally invented the greatest game changer in the history of evolution. The invention of fire led to the invention of cooking, which meant a whole new world of nutrition, aka it looks like meat's finally on the menu, boys. The introduction of cooked meat into your diet single-handedly shrunk the size of your stomachs and doubled the size of your brains over the course of two million years. And all this extra brain power accelerated your capacities for thinking, communication, and love far beyond the rest of the animal kingdom. If it weren't for cooked meat, humans would literally still be one-fist-brained savages trapped in East Africa fighting off lions with sharpened sticks. Which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that vegans, vegetarians, and anybody else who refuses to eat meat are literally, scientifically, subhuman. If they had it their way, humans would still be living in caves and eating grass. Human intelligence has been entirely dependent on meat ever since Homo sapiens existed. Which means vegans are actively devolving their brains into a lesser species. If you don't believe me, let's take a look at some of history's most famous meat deniers. In the final decade of his life, Adolf Hitler swore off meat and became a vegetarian. Right around that same time, he started committing genocide against Jews and locking them up in concentration camps. Huh, it's almost like the lack of meat devolved his brain and he lost his capacity for love. Example 2. Emp Lemon became a vegan and suddenly lost interest in making YouTube poops. Basically the same exact scenario as the previous example. Albert Einstein, famous vegan. Oh, uh, but he was so smart, right? Is he the exception that proves the rule? No. The lack of meat in his brain inspired him to create E equals MC2, which led to the creation of the nuclear bomb. Do you see the pattern here? These vegans are not only trying to actively decay human evolution, but they seem intent on destroying humanity in general. Can you name one carnivore who has ever tried to genocide the human race? Go ahead, try. I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And in case you were wondering how I, Simi and Jimmy, am the next step in human evolution, well, it's quite simple. My diet is exclusively meat. Chicken nuggies, chicken tendies, chicken wingies. This is the nutrition of an enlightened individual. And the absence of vegetables and fruits from my diet has caused my brain to expand from a double fist to a triple fist. 
So if you know any vegans or vegetarians, please explain to them that from an evolutionary standpoint, they're devolving the human race. And if they won't listen to reason, then get as far away from them as possible because they're most likely planning humanity's next genocide. Anyway, that's it for this pilot episode of the History of Humanity. I hope you learned something today, and I look forward to condescendingly explaining the entirety of your own history to you from the very beginning to the modern day. We've got a long journey ahead of us, and I hope you'll come along for the ride. And while I still have you here, I'd like to give a special shout out to Mario Jong Un and the rest of my amazing patrons who have shown an inhuman level of patience. Thank you.